In this video, we will look at the load and store instructions. As we have seen in previous videos, we can use the Raspberry Pi 5 desktop environment. In the case of headless operation, we can connect via SSH. We enter the username and the IP address, type in the password, and log in. We can list the contents. A third method of connection is through RPI Connect, as shown in the previous video. We list the devices and have access to screen sharing and remote shell. We connect to the terminal, wait for the process to finish, and maximize the window. Then we can enlarge the font and list the contents again. For better organization, we create a folder called ARM64 to keep all the programs together. We change directories and see that it is empty. We use nano to create a file. We write the first example we did, placing the global directive, the start label, the instruction to move the immediate value 5 into the x0 register, and the output. To use GCC instead of the as and LD commands, the first error we would encounter is due to the start label. GCC expects main, so we add the no start files parameter. As we can see, the executable file is being built. We can use the obj dump command to disassemble and see the instructions in assembly language. Everything looks good there. By changing the parameter to s to view the sections, we see several sections created by GCC, which are necessary for the compiler, but not for execution. We are not using advanced code here, otherwise GCC would generate additional code. Now, we proceed to assemble and link manually using the as and ld commands. We repeat the obj dump command with the s parameter, and we will see that only one section is displayed, with the only content encoded in hexadecimal for the three instructions. To avoid writing the as and ld commands separately, along with the execution line using the echo command, we can create a bash script. We write the header. Then we write the commands we need, such as the s command to assemble, the ld command to link, and the execution line with echo. We can also add a delete command. To execute the script, we use the bash command followed by the script name assled, and then the program name without the extension. We can see its execution and the deletion of files. In the second example, we will use the EQU directive, which assigns a constant value to a symbolic label. We define MAX with a value of 100 and assign it to the return register. We run the script, and we can see that the value printed by echo is 100. It's important to note that the label is replaced by the value, meaning no memory is used for this. To stay organized, we will rename the file test.s to 01 test.s, list the files, and now we only have the two examples and the script. In the third example, we will use alignment. Each instruction occupies 32 bits, or 4 bytes, just like the word type variable. We use now and write the base. Now, we will declare a data section with dot data and create a variable called b that will contain two numbers, along with the two instructions. We use the script to assemble and link, and we see that it returns a value of 0 because we did not assign any value to the return register called x0. There will be cases where the use of echo is not necessary, and we don't need to delete the executable file. We copy the ACID script to a SODEC so that we have two scripts. We edit the ACID script, remove the echo command, and remove the executable file parameter from the RM command. This way, the file will remain for analysis. We run the script and see it didn't print anything, leaving the executable file 03 line. We use obj dump s to see two addresses with two numbers and two instructions. Later, we will look at the stack. ARM64 requires 16-byte alignment for use. So, for this fourth example, we will align the data and instructions to 16 bytes. We copy example there for align to there for align 16, list the contents, and then edit the program with nano. We will add alignment to the data and instructions. We will add dot align 4 for data alignment and dot balline 16 for instruction alignment. Both directives do exactly the same thing. Since dot align takes an exponent for powers of 2 and dot balline takes the number of bytes we want to align, they are equivalent. We save and exit. We list the contents and execute the script with bash and the files are for align 16. We see that it didn't print the return value and didn't delete the executable file. We inspect the executable again using the obj dump with the s parameter. As you'll notice, now the data section has two more values as well as two additional instructions. 
The values in data are zero, but in the instructions, we see hexadecimal code. We inspect with full BJ dump and D and see that the added instructions are NOP, no operation. In example five, we will use the LDR instruction, which is a load register, but using an array, we declare it inside dot data with the name A and values one, two, and three. Now, we load the address of the global variable using LDR, the X1 register, and the equal sign and letter A. We can see X1 as a pointer pointing to A. Next, we load the first position of the array using LDR, the X0 register, and bracketed addressing with X1, followed by the exit code. We save and exit. Then, we execute using the script ADLDEC and the name 5 ldr The result gives us the value 1, which is the position 0 of the array. This is direct addressing, but there are three offset modes, immediate or register pre-index and post-index, which modify the register. In example 6, we will use the previous example by copying it to 06 LDR offset to show how addressing with an offset works. We will use normal offset, meaning we won't modify any registers. Just like in high-level programming, addresses are like indices, but in bytes. We write the MOV instruction, the X2 register, and the immediate value 8, representing an 8-byte offset from byte 0. So, we will take the value 3. If they were indices, we would be talking about index 2 of the array, because arrays start at index 0 for 1, index 1 for 2, and index 2 for value 3. We clear the screen, then execute the script using as LDEC with the name 06LDR offset, which prints the value 3, just as we mentioned. In example 7, we will use the str instruction, which is a store register to store data in variables. We copy the contents of example 5LDR to 7 str For this, we will use a section for uninitialized data.bss. We will call it b and use the dot space data type with a size of 8 bytes. We load the address of a then, we load the content of a, which is 10, into the x2 register using LDR, x2, and the addressing to x1. We load the address of variable b into the x3 register. To store, we use the str instruction with the x2 register and the addressing to x3, meaning b equals a, and we return it as the return value. Now, we execute the script with the parameter 07 str, and the value printed is 10, which is correct because the return value was b, which we set equal to a. We have worked with numbers, but we can also do it with characters. However, at a low level, we use their ASCII representation. We copy the content to A8ASCII.S. When editing it with nano, we change the value of a to zero and add a variable called S with type dot string, initializing the word OLA in quotes. We then load the address of S into the X1 register. Once the address is loaded, we access its content. For example, if we want to get the letter A, we need an offset of three. We then load the address of variable A into register X3, and to store the ASCII value corresponding to the letter A, we use strb, then w2 and the address of X3, and return it. We run it, and it prints 97, the ASCII value for A. It's important to note the use of register w2, which is the same as X2, but only the least significant half. In example 9, we copy the content from input 8 ASCII to 9 byte, because we will work with a smaller data type. Then, we edit it with nano. Now, we leave only the variable a, define it as type dot byte with a value of 0, then load the address of a into x1, and load the immediate value 10 into register x2. We use the strb instruction, which works the same as str but with bytes, to store the value 10 in the address of x1, which is the variable a, and return it. We execute the script with the 9 byte file, and it prints the value 10. It's important to highlight that echo only works at the byte level, from 0 to 255. That's all for this video. If you liked it, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See you in the next video.